So in this video, we're going to learn about Docker volumes. In a nutshell, Docker volumes are used for data persistence in Docker. So for example, if you have databases or other stateful applications, you would want to use Docker volumes for that. So what are the specific use cases when you need Docker volumes? So a container runs on a host. Let's say we have a database container and a container has a virtual file system where the data is usually stored. But here there is no persistence. So if I were to remove the container or stop it and restart the container, then the data in this virtual file system is gone and it starts from a fresh state, which is obviously not very practical because I want to save the changes that my application is making in the database. And that's where I need Docker volumes. So what are the Docker volumes exactly? So on a host, we have a physical file system, right? And the way volumes work is that we plug the physical file system path. It could be a folder, a directory, and we plug it into the containers file system path. So in simple terms, a directory a folder on a host file system is mounted into a directory or folder in the virtual file system of Docker. So what happens is that when a container writes to its file system, it gets replicated or automatically written on the host file system directory and vice versa. So if I were to change something on the host file system, it automatically appears in the container as well. So that's why when a container restarts, even if it starts from a fresh state in its own virtual file system, it gets the data automatically from the, from the host because the data is still there. And that's how data is populated on the startup of a container every time you restart. Now there are different types of Docker volumes and so different ways of creating them. Usually the way to create Docker volumes is using Docker run command. So in the Docker run, there is an option called minus V and this is where we define the connection or the reference between the host directory and the container directory. And this type of volume definition is called host volume. And the main characteristic of this one is that you decide where on the host file system that reference is made. So which folder on the host file system you mount into the container. So the second type is where you create a volume just by referencing the container directory. So you don't specify which uh, directory on the host should be mounted, but that's taking care of the Docker itself. So that directory is first of all automatically created by Docker under the var lib docker volumes. So for each container, there will be a folder generated that gets mounted automatically to the container. And this type of volumes are called anonymous volumes because you don't have a reference to this automatically generated folder. Basically you just have to know the path. And the third volume type is actually an improvement of the anonymous volumes. And it specifies the name of the folder on the host file system. And the name is up to you. It's just to reference the directory. And that type of volumes are called named volumes. So in this case, compared to anonymous volumes, you, you can actually reference that volume just by name. So you don't have to know exactly the path. So from these three types, the mostly used one and the one that you should be using in production is actually the named volumes because there are additional benefits to letting Docker actually manage those uh, volume directories on the host. Now this showed how to create Docker volumes using Docker run commands. But if you're using Docker compose, it's actually the same. So this actually shows how to use volume definitions in a Docker compose. And this is pretty much the same as in Docker run commands. So we have volumes attribute and underneath you define your volume def definition, just like you would in this minus V option. And here we use a named volume. So DB dash data will be the name reference name that you can just think of it could be anything. And um, in var lib MySQL data is the path in the container. Then you may have some other containers and at the end, so on the same level as the services, you would actually list all the volumes that you have defined. 
you define a list of volumes that you want to mount into the containers. So if you were to create volumes for different containers, you would list them all here. And on the container level, then you actually define under which path that specific volume can be mounted. And the benefit of that is that you can actually mount a reference of the same uh, folder on a host to more than one containers. And that would be beneficial if uh, those containers need to share the data. In this case, you would mount the same volume uh, name or reference to two different containers and you can mount them into different path inside of the container. Even. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. If you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.